The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time for Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling. We'll talk all things hokey wrestling with Coach Tony Roby and staff. Now, let's join your host, Hall of Fame wrestling writer and broadcaster, Jason Bryant. Episode 94 of Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling, catching up with Coach Tony Roby. After a couple weeks of action, some of it around the greater part of the Commonwealth this coming weekend, Valentine's Day down in Raleigh. That's the big duel we're going to be talking about on the show predominantly. But Coach Roby, uh, after kind of getting punched in the mouth there, you come off with three wins, beating UVA, Old Dominion, and Duke. And uh, I guess what's what's been the uh, the licking of the wound, so to speak, after the loss to Carolina? It was a good opportunity for us to kind of take a step back and, and reevaluate some things. And I think for guys individually, maybe reevaluate some things and, uh, you know, just get back on the horse and, and try not to dwell on it for too long. Um, try not to get too emotionally high or too low, but obviously it was, it was a disappointing performance and we addressed it, uh, you know, with the team as a staff after, after the match that night. And, um, you know, and then the next day we moved on and, and I, I felt like our guys did a pretty good job rebounding, um, the, you know, the following weekend at Virginia, and then at Old Dominion, um, felt like we got, you know, we got their best effort uh, on both of those occasions. And we had some guys that stepped up for us as a, as a program. And then, uh, you know, last weekend at Duke was was good as well. So we're, we're focused right now on getting ready for North Carolina State on Friday night and, uh, you know, finishing the season out the right way. You know, a big win against Duke. Granted, Duke is is having a, a kind of an, an abysmal season, even by their standards, at the Moss Arts Center. But again, the experience, the opponent notwithstanding, the experience at the Moss Arts Center, this has really become an event that, that Hokie fans and Hokie coaches circle on the schedule to put on a show and really showcase not just Hokie wrestling, but the sport of wrestling as a whole. Yeah, it was. It's an incredible uh, venue. Uh, it, it just keeps getting better and better every every year for us. Um, I, I don't think there was more than five empty seats in the house, so it was packed. It was loud. It was fun. Um, I know Duke's struggling this year. They've, in their defense, they've got you know the two fine silver b- brothers are, are uh, taking Olympic red shirts. They've got another guy that's uh, either red shirt or Olympic red shirt, and it's p- pretty solid for them. So. Um, you know, typically when you see Duke, they've got three or four pretty solid guys, and, and this year's uh, been a difficult year for them. But um, nonetheless, it, it was a good opportunity for our guys to get out there and, and uh, have an opponent where we could really go out and focus on scoring points. And, um, you know, I, I think getting some momentum on our side, it was also an opportunity for us to wrestle a few guys that ordinarily don't get to wrestle and, uh, you know, give, uh, give David McFadden and Hunter Bowling the weekend off. So it it was good rest for us. We took, took, uh, Sunday off as a team and, and got back on the horse on Monday and, you know, we're, we're getting ready for, uh, to take off tomorrow to head down to Raleigh. One thing I want to circle back on with the, the UVA win was we've starting, we're starting to see crowds like, we've not seen in college wrestling at places you haven't seen him before. UVA had a pretty strong crowd for the Commonwealth Clash, of course. You know, Virginia, Virginia Tech is a huge rivalry that transcends all sports. And, you know, what's it like to go into maybe some opposing gyms now and be like, okay, this team's showing up. It's obviously they're going to show show their best because their fans came out, uh, you know, in in pretty good numbers there at John Paul Jones Arena. It was good. It was uh, to wrestle in John Paul Jones was uh, it, it was pretty cool. It was first class. It's an incredible arena. For sure, they had it curtained off, so you know it was a. I don't know how many seats were available. There's about two thousand fans there, um, but it was loud, and it was you know there was a lot of Virginia Tech fans there. I bet close to half of them were Virginia Tech fans. So um, it, it's good. I mean, that's you, you want that. I, it's really exciting to see our sport continue to grow, and I think I think the coverage that we're getting on TV on the Big Ten Network, and then also on the ACC Network, and some of these venues and crowds and, and uh, matches that you're seeing, the excitement for the sport of wrestling, is, I, in my opinion, is an all-time high. And I think a lot of it's just having that 
platform to get it out to people. And, and uh, I think the more people get exposed to wrestling, both here at Virginia Tech and across the country, the more people are going to get reeled in and become fans. So it, it's been neat to be a part of and, and to see that. You know, same thing at Old Dominion. Old Dominion, I think, probably had their best crowd of the year. Uh, There's a lot of people there, and it was loud. And again, Anytime we wrestle uh, in in the state of Virginia, there's a lot of Hokie fans there, regardless if it's in Castle Coliseum or if it's elsewhere. So it's great to have that support, but it's also great to um, to, to wrestle in front of big crowds. I mean, that's what kids want when when they're looking at colleges. They want to they want to go to places where they know they're going to have you know thousands of people. Hopefully, you know three, four thousand, five thousand fans in the stands for these big matches, and uh, that's that's what it's. Uh, working towards and building towards that for a long time. And I think we're, we're starting to see a lot more of that. And it's pretty cool. We're also starting to see, you mentioned the big 10 network, the ACC network, the ACC network with the big duel with, with you guys in Carolina a couple weeks ago. And then of course, North Carolina NC state, which drew a record crowd down there over 4,300 in Raleigh. And they're going to set it up, set the table and do it again with, with you guys coming in and the ACC dual meet championship kind of hanging in the balance. Of course, there's still more matches to go after this weekend, but uh, what, what were your general impressions of what you saw with, with NC state and Carolina as you prepared for this matchup with the Wolfpack as a coach? You know, a lot of it is kind of what we expected. Um, it, it's an awesome venue to wrestle in. It, it's a, you know, Reynolds Coliseum, the renovation they did is first class. It's uh, it's perfect size-wise. I think it seats, you know, right around 5,000 people. So uh, it's going to be loud. It's going to be, you know, fans are going to be on top of us. They don't they don't like us a whole lot down there. And, and so we're going to hear it. But uh, hopefully, you know, I'm excited about that. I, I For me as a competitor, I loved wrestling in opposing arenas. And it kind of... Uh, I think a lot of times took me to another level, and, and as a coach, I, I enjoy it as well. So hopefully, our guys will feel the same way. But as far as the match was concerned, I mean, it was it was kind of what we expected in a lot of places. Uh, you know, it, there's going to be a lot of there was a lot of tight bouts, and yeah, it's going to be the same way on Friday night. I mean, it was similar to us in, in North Carolina. You know, there's you have to find a way to win those those close matches, those so-called toss-up matches, maybe pull one upset in there. And, and that's really how um, these dual meets are determined. And, and the, the uh, such a razor-thin line in the ACC right now with, with a lot of these teams, that the margin for error is very, very small. And I think for us this year, it's, it's been very small all year. So, uh, you know, we can't, you can't afford to have anybody stumble. But we've been wrestling NC State for a long time, um, kind of know what those guys are about and what they do. And, uh you know, we, we know what to expect. Is it overstated to a point that opposing coaches will watch a duel like this and, and make notes for their match? Or is it something that you guys are already already set with the film and the techniques that, that the opponents have? Well, no, I think you go back individually and you watch, you know, you watch the guys that, because uh, everybody, you know, everybody does things a little bit different and, and they still have a few young guys in there and guys change from year to year, you know, guys add things to their wrestling and they develop and they grow. So, um, yeah, I think this time of year, there's, there's some, there's definitely uh, an aspect of, of watching some video and just, I think more than anything, having an awareness of, of, where they're good, where they want to wrestle from, and just kind of being aware of that. You can't, you can't dwell on it. You can't obsess about it. You can't uh, really focus on it. You just need to be aware of of some things that they're going to do. And I think if you can anticipate it and you can expect those things, it, it can help you um, in preparation for those matches. But at the end of the day, we've got to go out with the mindset that we're going to score a lot of points and we're going to go out and be aggressive and get after these guys. And good things happen when you do that. We're going to set the table for this one. This is Valentine's Day, so if there's nothing better to do with your loved ones, make your way down to Raleigh and root for the Hokies. If, of course, if you're a fan of Hokie Nation, 7 p.m., I mean, it's it's the great place. Dinner and a show. You can get dinner afterwards. You get dinner before. You got the show right there. But we've got number three NC State, one of two unbeatens left in the country, 13-0. and Number seven, Virginia Tech, 11-1. and Five ranked matchups looking at the flow uh, rankings head-to-head. And of these ten bouts... You know, we're looking at. We talked about the the, the toss up factor when the when the heels came to town, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe even eight matches you can look at that that are there. You can't really determine a true true favorite. And of these ten bouts, only four of them these athletes have met each other before. So uh, a lot of uncertainty. Yeah, you know how they wrestle, but what's it like going into bouts when when your kids are wrestling people for the first time in college? It's fun. I, I, it's 
you know, it, it's exciting. There's certainly a level of uh, um, just not knowing what's going to happen. I think there's going to be, no, you know, in a lot of these matches, there's a, there's something surprising a lot of times that happens, and hopefully it's in our favor. But, yeah, I, I feel really good about where we're at uh, as a team and how our guys are approaching this thing. And, and uh, you know, we, at the end of the day, it's it's another match, and you can't get too high or too low throughout the course of the season. But uh, I think our guys are really excited. I, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, the way we performed against North Carolina was hopefully a wake-up call, and I think, you know, that, that we'll be ready this weekend. But uh, it, it's from a fan's perspective, uh, it's – it's going to be really, really fun to be a part of and to watch. And um, I, I think there's a, a ton of excitement a, around this match and uh, this rivalry. And, uh, you know, we, every year that we meet with these guys, it's a, it's a heck of a dual meet. And uh, I, I expect the same thing. Don't want to say I have an agenda with this next statement, but wouldn't it be great if this match actually meant something greater than, you know, a potential ACC dual meet regular season title? Yeah, I mean, I know where you're going with this, but I, and I, and I, I think you know that would be great if 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 it was the case and that uh, if we did have some type of dual meet champion or championship. But I, you know, it, it's hard to argue that college dual meets aren't important right now. Um, I think every program in the country, especially when we get to in conference dual meets, takes these things very very seriously. Um, I, I think the excitement level around college dual meets is as is, is high as it's ever been by, I think by, by a long shot, to be honest with you. So, you know, despite the fact that, uh, there's, you know, we still have our traditional NCAA championships, uh, it's, uh, college dual meet wrestling season is growing like crazy. The popularity of it is at an all time high. In my opinion, you know, I watch a lot of, a lot of wrestling on the big 10 network and you see, um, you know, just the crowds that are coming out and the passion that, um, people have for the sport of wrestling and for their universities and their teams, both in the ACC, the big 10 and across the country, it's a pretty neat thing to be a part of. I mean, I think if you're a college athletic director and your school doesn't have wrestling and you tune in and watch some of these matches, you, you got to, you know, seriously consider uh, you know, adding the sport of wrestling because it has a lot to offer. One of my agendas with dual meets is trying to get every school in this country, division one, two, three, otherwise to track their home attendance, whether it's tickets sold, whether it's people, you know, clicking the little thinger when you, you come through the turnstile. I want to make sure that we at least get all 79 Division One teams reporting their attendance because I believe this year we'll have at least 25 teams averaging over 1,000. I mean, even Indiana's having a pretty pretty rough year as they, you know, in year two with Angel Escobedo there, but they're putting up 15, 1,600 fans a match, and, and there's not a whole lot there to cheer about. So those are the things that that was where I'm going with, with my agenda with dual beats. Now, to this dual meet. Again, a top 10 ACC match. This has become old hat with Virginia Tech at NC State. Kicking it off, 125. Jory Prada ranked 18th. Jacob Camacho ranked 16th. They've met one time previously in the 2018-19 season where Camacho won big at the Hokie Open. And, and I've, I've got to believe everybody thinks that Joey Prada is a different wrestler this this stage in the game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Joey's he's struggled a little bit lately um, for whatever reason. But he's capable. I mean, we see we, we've seen what he's done when he's wrestling his best. He was wrestling his best at the beginning of the season, so uh, he needs to you know he needs to get back to doing what he was doing then and approaching things the way he was um, in in the beginning part of this season. And you know, really at the end of last year, he wrestled really well too. So we need that Joey Prada to show up. Um, and I, I think if that Joey Prada shows up and, and competes. Um, you know, we've got a good chance of getting our hand raised, but it's it's going to be a tight match. Um, you know, Camacho's got some things that he's pretty good at. He's a young guy. He's had a fair amount of success. I know Sam Latone, I think, wrestled him this year. Um, you know, so we're pretty familiar with, with Camacho and, and what he's about. But, uh, you know, Joey's got to worry about Joey and, and making sure that he's uh, – He's ready to wrestle his intensity, his excitement level, and, and he's going out there and, and getting to his offense and, um, you know, getting getting that guy on his heels instead of being on his heels himself. Yeah, he's a tough out. One, four of his last five. He only lost to Jack Mueller, whom, uh, you know, Joey wrestled in that dual meet a week and a half, two weeks ago. Moving to 133, another matchup between athletes that have seen each other. Colin Girardi checking in at number 25. Jarrett Trombley not ranked for NC State, but they did split last year. And now that they're both in the lineup, what changes from from that perspective when you when you wrestle a guy in an open tournament when you're redshirting versus you know having to suit up in a one-hour weigh-in and, and, and put it on the line there? 
open tournaments are funny sometimes. Um, just it, it's, I think some guys have a hard time getting up for open tournaments for whatever reason. Um, it, you're wrestling multiple matches in a day. There's not a lot of people in the stands, so it's a lot different. Uh, I, I feel like I feel like there's uh, there's definitely going to be a lot more on the line, uh, and I think that bodes well for us. I mean, Colin Girardi is uh he's he's a pretty even keel steady guy we we know what we're going to get with colin he's he's solid his effort is always really good um so you know it's going to be another one uh, it's going to be a tight match i don't think there's any question about it um but you know colin's had some success against this guy he's got to be able to go on i think if we can we can score a couple takedowns i feel really good about our chances 141. Mitch Moore's ranking at 24, a little deceptive knowing uh, the type of wrestler he is. Tariq Wilson off a win over Zach Sherman. These two met one previous time in their career, and that was in sudden victory. So, uh, you know, Mitch has shown he's right there with Tariq Wilson, who is one of the most dangerous wrestlers on his feet in the country. And it's one of those situations where are you looking to slow the pace down here? Is it something that, uh, you know, Mitch look, looking for a home run, or is it going to be more of a, a tactical match and say, all right, let's, let's pick our spots, get our takedowns when we can? I like Mitch's approach the last couple times he's been out there, in particular against UVA and at Old Dominion, where he's went out and he was aggressive early. Uh, his leg attacks, have got, you know, he's, he's going out and scoring takedowns, getting the guy's legs, picking him up, taking him to the mat, you know, and that's how he needs to approach this match. I think, uh, you know, we have to be aware of, of where Wilson's good because he's, if he, you know, if he shoots in and gets under your arms and gets his arms around your waist, he's very good in that position. He's very good in the top position. So again, it's, it's a matter of being aware of that, but Mitch, uh, you know, Mitch needs to go out and get aggressive and get after this guy and, you know, and kind of make it a brawl. In my opinion, I think that's when Mitch Moore's at his best when he's, uh, kind of trying to be too tactical, it, that doesn't really bode well for him. So he's got to, um, you know, keep his foot, get his foot on the gas early and keep his foot on the gas and, and see what happens. Moving to 149 again, these are some of these weights that, you know, the dual meet doesn't necessarily hang on the balance and how well your stars do, but how the guys like Bryce Andonian do against A.J. Lighton, who was out against North Carolina, where it is he will be the starter at 149. They had Matt Grippy against the heels and uh, you, you know, it's one of those things where you really don't know what you're going to get with either of these guys. You got a true freshman and a guy that's that spent some time in the room, and and there is no previous matchup between these two. So a lot of people look at this, scratching their heads, going like, who, "Who's the favorite here?" Yeah, it's it'll be interesting. It's there's a definitely a contradiction in in styles. Um, their guy is, I don't think, you know, is 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 really solid, but he's not a guy that can typically puts up a ton of points. Uh, but he's tough to score on. He's positionally very, very sound. Um, he's he's a solid wrestler. You know, Bryce on the other hand is dynamic and, and can go out and put up points and you know and can uh, get things rolling and keep things rolling. So Bryce needs to go out and be aggressive. And I, you know, I think um, I think if we can get to our offense and stay in our offense and, and wrestle in the positions where Bryce wants to be, and in particular, kind of stay out of the positions where Bryce isn't great. Um, you know he's he's got a good chance, but again, another match that we really don't know what to expect at this particular point. And uh, you know Bryce has uh, some been somewhat inconsistent, but I, I feel like he's starting to figure things out. At least I hope he is. Uh, he's a true freshman. His his talent is you know as I've talked about it before on the show. Uh, he's an incredibly talented guy, great athlete. But uh, you know he's got to continue to to get better and. and try to figure things out both you know during the in his preparation and then during the match as well so it'll be interesting another one it's just uh it's hard to predict yeah and even looking at the giving wrestle stat the plug here looking at the match their common opponents uh, against one another andonian three and four light and eight and eight and and knowing they've both beaten wade unger they've both beaten keenan carter they've both lost to hunter richard so i mean and they both beaten tanner smith so it's like man this is i mean you're looking at trying to find any intangible that you can find common opponent distributor property whatever and again toss up city baby toss up city this is one that i think uh, i'm going to be really intently watching because knowing that this is this is uh this could be a real uh you know tipping point for the duel one way or the other yeah it, it definitely could be i, I but i again i mean i, I think uh i like bryce's focus right now and and uh I, I think he's made some adjustments mentally that are, are really going to help him. No pressure, right? No pressure. Yeah, 
It is, you know, it is what it is. This is why you come to school and wrestle at places like this. I mean, these Bryce Andonian has been wrestling in big matches his entire life. He went to St. Ed's High School, and uh, you know, the schedule that they wrestled in high school was absolutely brutal. He's wrestled in Fargo. He's um, you know, he, he knows what it's about to wrestle in big time matches. And I think he embraces that. And I think he enjoys that. He's, you know, he's a guy that I think is, is a gamer. 157 pounds, number 12, BC LaPrade, number two, Hayden Heidley. This was a six, four bout last year, won by Heidley. And while the match was close, I think this is probably the one, th- one of the few bouts that you can look at and be like, okay, NC state is, is, is a, a, a slightly more than heavy favorite here. But, uh, you know, talk about how BC's been wrestling down the stretch. It did, is coming off that loss uh, to Larry early. But uh, w- what's a match like Hydley present for a guy like BC? I think, you know, I, I like the way BC wrestled in Virginia. And, and even against early. Early's tough. I mean, he was an All-American last year. And BC, you know, he was, that was a toss-up match. I could have easily have went the other way. There's, there's no doubt about it. I think BC is capable of beating anybody in the country if he brings his A game. And, uh, you know, he's got his work cut out for him. We're well aware of how good Heidley is and, and what he's done. It speaks for itself. I think from a style standpoint, BC is, you know, he's a big, strong kid. He goes hard. He's not afraid to get himself tired. And he can he can wrestle when things are hard and got a lot out there. And when he doesn't maybe have necessarily a lot of gas left in the tank, he's a, a, capable of pushing himself and getting through those tough matches. So last year he did a great job of getting to Hiley. He was able to score a takedown on him and, and got to his legs again late in the match when it was tied and, and uh, you know, wasn't able to finish. So I just think, he, you know, you got it. Number one, you got to believe you can beat a guy like this, right? So if you don't believe you can beat him, you got no chance. So BC's got to go out there with the mentality. He can, you know, he, he can beat this guy and then he's got to wrestle, wrestle a perfect match and he's capable of doing that. From here on out, nobody's met each other in college competition, so it's going to be a lot of question marks. Uh, moving to 165, Thomas Boulder will be back in the lineup for NC State, ranked 10th in the country. David McFadden, you said you gave him the night off against Duke, ranked number 7. And what what has Dave had to do since that uh, that loss to, to, to Monday and that, that Carolina duel to get himself back on track? I think he just, you need to forget about it and move on and, and figure out, you know, I guess figure out what she did from a preparation standpoint that uh, – that hurts you a little bit, but uh, he made some bad decisions during that match. It was obvious. He started pressing, he panicked, and everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. And um, it's not indicative. I mean, Dave's got to look at. We got to look at his his career here at Virginia Tech. And if you look at his whole career, it's pretty pretty darn impressive. Um, so you know, one hiccup is one hiccup, and you move on, you move past it, you forget about it, and and you focus on all the things that you're good at. And I think you know, Dave's got plenty of great things that he's done that he can focus on. Um, but you know, again, it's just about getting back getting back on the horse. I've said that a couple of times and getting back to work and focusing on what's next. We can't, we, we can't dwell on it. Um, it's over, it's done with. And I think, you know, Dave, if he finishes this year out the way he's capable of, nobody will even, you know, remember or talk about that match. What type of problems does a guy like Thomas Bullard present for a guy like David McFadden? He's tough to finish on. Um, you know, he's a funky guy. He can roll around. He's good on top with legs. Reminds me a lot of Evan Wick. Um, you know, Dave, I think from a style standpoint, he's a pretty good finisher when he gets to your legs, but we got to try to avoid rolling around with this guy. You don't, you don't want to be rolling around and, um, you know, putting this guy where he's good. So we got to finish clean. That's really important. It's always important, but I think it's more important, um, against, uh, against Bullard and and really against NC state in general. Another Bullard to be there at. 174 Daniel Bullard again probably since they're twins same style of wrestlers against Cody Hughes and again expectations here number 15 Bullard Hughes coming in unranked I think Cody's got a lot of confidence he's coming off a good win against uh against Duke um that kid's had a good season he's by far and away their their best guy had a he had a good win against a lot uh, against North Carolina and um Cody wrestled great dominated really so uh for Cody He's got to go out and, and, again, wrestle where he's good. I mean, he's stay inside his box or where he wants to wrestle from, but he can't be afraid to pull the trigger and attack. And he did that against Duke. He pulled the trigger and he attacked, and he finished, you know, I think three takedowns on that guy. And um, that's that's the Cody Hughes we need to see out there. So, um, you know, similar opponent to, to like you mentioned, uh, at 65, his twin brother, and they, they wrestle very similar. Um, they, you know, the the 74 bowlers may be a little bit undersized for the weight class, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's going to be it's going to be a 
it's going to be an important match for sure. And if it, if we can figure out how to win one of these matches where maybe, you know, they're a little more favored, it, it's certainly going to make things a lot easier in the outcome for the team. Yeah, and look at it, Cody down the street. I mean, the, the last month and a half of the season, I mean, he's, he's won seven of his last nine, which is was good. And, you know, there's there's the the win against Virginia. There's the win against ODU. Kramer's pretty a tough out, even as a freshman. You mentioned Eaglin from Duke. He's, he's a tough out, too. But some of these guys wrestle much differently. You, you touched on it uh, with 133, but wrestling in a dual meet, it seems like some guys are just, they just naturally feel better in that situation. And, and it's maybe it's easier for them to get some momentum going one match at a time versus trying to, trying to you know, rail off two, three, four wins in a row in a tournament. I think sometimes when you wrestle close matches, it's, it's uh, tournaments are a little bit tougher. We have a hard time scoring a lot of points because you gotta you gotta try to win back to back to back tight matches. So um, guys that that are in that boat sometimes struggle a little bit in in those events where you have to win multiple matches like that in one day. When you can go out and put up a bunch of points, man, it makes wrestling a heck of a lot easier. Now the highlight match of the duel, we've got number two Hunter Bowl and number three Trent Hidley, two of the best young talents at the weight class, and and two guys that are definitely. Uh, challengers to to potentially face Zahid Valencia in the finals because I think a lot of people are penciling Zahid in there as as pretty much the unanimous number one in the universe at that weight class. But we got two guys that haven't met yet. Uh, they were in the same tournament in Vegas. Uh, Taylor Lujan, where where we know Hunter Bowen split, and then Hydley has the win over Lujan. So there is a common opponent there. Uh, this one this one just has that. It's 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 got that feeling like this is going to be a knockdown drag out. I don't expect a whole lot of scoring, but I mean this 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 seems like it'll be a slugfest. I think so. Um, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I mean you got two of the best guys in the country wrestling, so it's 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 a match uh, that you could possibly see, like you said, in the semifinals of the NCAA tournament. So uh, you, those matches typically aren't super high scoring. I think for Hunter, uh, the more the more wrestling and the more positions and the more uh, more things that we can get to, uh, I think that benefits us. You know, Hidley wants to, he's, he wants to score fast. Uh, he jumps to his underhook and tries, you know, most of his takedowns take less than a second or two. So it, we've got to be able to combat that. We be able, we have to be able to get to him and create more wrestling. And that's really when Hunter's at his best is when he can get to guys and get his hands on them and get to the leg. And, you know, even when scrambles are created, uh, that's going to help Hunter a lot because he's really good in those positions. I, I think Hunter's confidence level is at an all-time high right now, and his approach is really, really good. I think he's – you know, I think he's got things figured out from a mental standpoint, and he's going to approach this match exactly like he approaches every other match. Um, you know, and, and when you can do that, uh, good things typically happen for you. And he's, uh, you know, I think that's how you win at the NCAA tournament is understanding that. And, uh, you know, I think Hunter's got a pretty good understanding of, of uh, how to compete and how to compete against good guys. When you look at a match like this and, and you say, you know, kind of a, it could be an NCAA semifinal how much of that is in the ear of the athlete? Is that something that's just kind of you talk to the media about and, and we promote the sport that way? Or how much how much of that type of discussion is with the athlete? Like this is this is an NCAA semifinal type of match. This is the one that, that you've got to win. We don't discuss that at all. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, approach, we'll approach it like we would prepare for any other match and um, talk about some strategy and some technical things. But um, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you got to approach every single match the same mentally. And, and you know, you've got to learn how to do that. When you can do that, that's when you get really consistent. And I think that's something Hunter's done. I mean, we don't have to talk about that. Hunter knows. I mean, he's a smart guy. It's not, it's not hard to figure out. So um, he's, you know, I, I, I just like his approach and, and how he's handled things the entire season. And he's, like I said, I and mean, I think mentally he's, jumped levels here in the last year or so. Um, I don't want to expect any of that to affect his performance. Now, 197, this is one at the beginning of the year you would probably favor uh, and Nick Reenan heavily, but now Nick's taken some losses. As it looks like he's still not 100% from the, from, the, from the injury and the recovery from surgery. But Stan Smeltzer, on a different note, has been wrestling fairly well. I mean, yeah, he did drop the matches to Whitman and Aiello, but it, it, he's definitely come in and he's earned the spot rightly and, and has had some solid wins. And uh, this, this one, you know, like we said, beginning of the season is probably heavily favored NC State. Right now, you could put this one in the toss-up category based on the way that, that, that Nick Reenan's wrestling as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, they have another guy there. I'm not sure exactly who we're going to see at 197. They wrestled Reenan last week. Um, like you mentioned, I'm not sure if he's healthy or not. I, you know, we're we're not going to be overly concerned with that. I, I, Stan is uh, 
I, I like where Stan's at. I mean, you know, he's he's got to get better at wrestling for sure. Um, but his effort's really good. And even in, you know, against ILO, I thought he wrestled hard and made that guy work the whole time and really gave up a two and two right at the end. That was kind of suspect in my opinion. And that match is a lot closer than, than you saw on the scoreboard. And, um, you know, against Whitman, he, he got down four nothing and really out wrestled him the rest of the match. So we, Stan's got to make sure that he doesn't get down early in matches. And, and that, that kind of hurts him. He's got a pretty good gas tank. If it goes to the third, I like his chances. Uh, Reenan's a big move guy and you, you got to be aware of that. That's definitely one thing that, you know, we've, we've touched on with, with Stan is being aware of where Reenan wants to wrestle from. And, um, he's, you know, he's got a great left-handed headlock and he's, uh, he's, he's dangerous for sure. So, um, you, you got to be aware of that and you got to be able to weather the storm a little bit, but I think if we can get through, you know, the early portion of that match, uh, anything can happen. And, and Stan, Stan's got to go, you know, he's got to go hard and, and make it difficult on him and, you know, uh, take that thing to deep waters and see what happens. Heavyweight John Borst, ranked number 20 in the country. Deontay Wilson coming off a heroic performance at heavyweight in, in picking up the, the, the win to beat Carolina there last week. And again, one move matches sometimes. Sometimes it'll be 3-1 going in the third period, 3-1, 1-1 going in the sudden victory. And What's John Borst again? Got to do to avoid that type of situation with a guy who's who's not very tall, but he's super quick. Uh, John's got to get to his offense. When John's getting to his offense, and he's he, he's you know he's attacking, but he's attacking smart. You know you got to be a little bit careful when you're not a huge heavyweight. But uh, I think it's a matter of getting angles on his shots, and if we can finish takedowns and not to cut underneath this guy, I think we've got a good chance. Um, you know John's. John's wrestling ability is, is really high, and he's got really good stuff. He can score multiple ways. He can attack both legs, both sides of the body. Uh, he can attack high and low. And it's just if he goes out and wrestles hard for seven minutes and wrestles through those positions, and when he attacks, he's got to go 100% and, you know, and shoot to score and, and try to get to his feet or get an angle so we don't have to wrestle this guy's weight. I think, I think John will be fine. Um, you know, I, I, again, Duke, John looked unbelievably good. I know it was an inferior opponent, but, but nonetheless, I mean, I think you, you saw what he has from a skill standpoint in that match. And um, there's a lot to defend when you're wrestling John Borst if he goes out there and wrestles with a lot of confidence. Yeah, this is a big one. A lot of them are going to be toss-ups. It's one of those things like how, how nerve-wracking is a duel like this from a coaching perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, it's fun, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it's going to be exciting, and, uh, and that's kind of the way I'm I'm choosing to look at this thing. I mean, I, I think we've got an opportunity to knock off a good team and, and uh, you know, accomplish some great things and do it in an exciting fashion. And I don't, you know, there's probably not a lot of people that expect us to win this dual meet, but uh, I, I think we expect to win. So it's, uh, you know, that's like I said, I mean, this is what makes this thing fun. You don't want to go out there and you, you, it can't be easy all the time. Um, these challenges are, are why you coach and why you wrestle and, um, you know, stepping up and, and trying to accomplish some great things. And that's what we're trying to do as a program this year. You know, the last couple of weeks, we've had four teams in the ACC ranked in the top 10. Put that in perspective of what that means, not just for, for the conference, but for the national wrestling scene as a whole. It's impressive. And I've said it a bunch of times. I think, I think the conference is going to be even better in two years, three years. There's all these teams have young guys. There's not a lot of seniors floating around out there. Um, I think it's, it says a lot about the, the commitment to some of these institutions are making to the sport of wrestling, the coaches that they've hired. Um, the schools themselves. I mean, we, you know, to a certain degree, the ACC was always a sleeping giant. Um, easy places to recruit to geographically. We're all in pretty good spots. Um, kids want to come to school at, at a lot of these institutions, and um, I think you're starting to see it play out. It's taken a little bit of time, um, but you know, it's it's definitely exciting. It's to have you know Pitt and uh, UNC get a lot better here in recent years is really. Made Made things interesting so it's a fun time to be a, a wrestling fan in this part of the country all right 7 p.m valentine's day in raleigh Hokie nation make the trip down there to reynolds because it's probably going to be another packed house down there and uh those will check it out that can't make that trip acc network sean kenny be on the call there and it's a it's a good presentation for college wrestling whether you're in person or on the tube yeah it's great and it's like I think that you know this ACC network is a it's a game changer for for us and for our programs and our fans and 
Um, just uh, another way for people to consume this wrestling match. Being on live television is uh, it's as good as it gets, and I think it's a it's a great opportunity for us to showcase what wrestling is all about in, in our conference and at Virginia Tech. So um, we're excited about having another opportunity to to wrestle on live TV. Hokie fans, listen to Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling anywhere you go by subscribing on Apple Podcasts. Go to InsideVirginiaTechWrestling.com slash iTunes, or you can get the exclusive Android or iOS apps by going to InsideVirginiaTechWrestling.com. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.